Kind of an odd occurrence that happens when looking at the NES library are games that just seem kind of off. Not irreverent like a boy in his blob, or straight up insane like Zombie Nation, more a sense of, what is this game really? As kids we all knew Mario 2 was kind of different compared to Mario 1 and later Mario 3, but no one at the time knew the whole story about how Nintendo reskinned and repurposed the Famicom title Doki Doki Panic. Turns out there were tons of other examples of these cultural conversion types of games, including Sayuki World 2 being translated to the Old West for Wampum, or Mickey Mouse 3 getting the carnival treatment when it was changed to Kid Clown. But even weirder than those reskin games are the NES titles that were based on pre-existing pop culture properties that were developed before that license was fully usable. Like if, for example, Happy Elf Boy was a really popular 60s cartoon that Nintendo wanted to make a game for, but after conflicts with the TV studio, they decided to change the name and likeness and call it Legend of Zelda. As a kid, you'd probably have no idea that something was happening behind the scenes, but in modern times, the information has spread, and now more of these, hmm, this looks familiar, designs and their origins have come to light. So yeah, let's delve into NES games that were originally developed to be something entirely different. Some of these games I've already talked about a bit on this channel, so I'm going to just link to those in the description, and then others that I haven't really talked about I'll probably be coming back to later for longer reviews, so stay tuned. Alright, let's get to it. One of the more talked about instances of this is Sunsoft's Journey to Silius. At first it comes across as just another sci-fi run and gun platformer in the Mega Man vein, and yeah, that's what it is. But Journey was originally planned as a Terminator game, as seen in promotional clips and also in this Nintendo Power mention. Yeah, that looks pretty sick. The word is that Sunsoft lost the license during the development and so made changes in order to repurpose what they'd already programmed. They kept in all the machines, but changed the enemies into aliens to give Journey to Silius more of a space sci-fi theme. However, there are tons of sinister robots that look like they could have been built by Skynet, especially the final boss who is a straight up skinless Schwarzenegger. Journey to Silius is a very fun game, even without the Terminator license, featuring great controls, beautiful if dark graphics, and one of the best soundtracks on the system. It's also tough as nails, so get ready for the realness. Werewolf The Last Warrior is not only the perpetual contender for greatest name ever, it's also one of the first titles I reviewed on this channel. And while I could tell something was familiar about it, I never once made the connection that this was supposed to be a Wolverine game. It's so obvious in retrospect, especially in the enemy designs. Here's the masked goons from the Hellfire Club, the Juggernaut, and yep, the master of magnetism himself. Not to mention the titular werewolf who, even in his exaggerated form, shares many of Wolvie's traits, like, you know, blaze for hands. There is so much to love about this game, from the ridiculous cutscenes, to the impressive graphics, to the many different moves at your disposal, but unfortunately Werewolf the Last Warrior has some truly awful controls, the kind where you're constantly dying from missing your target, or repeatedly trying the same unnecessarily hard jumps. It's pretty infuriating, like berserker rage inducing, controller chucking, why madness. It will, however, always get bonus points for having the single greatest end screen of all time. That rules. Speaking of superheroes, here's a really odd one, Sunman. This is a mostly completed but never released title developed by Sunsoft that was originally created to be a Superman game. Man, those guys are two for two on this list. What happened in their offices that caused these unfortunate mix-ups? Well, apparently there was a disagreement about how to utilize the Man of Steel, and DC left Sunsoft without the character rights. What's great about Sunman is that they did not try at all to make you think this was something other than a Superman game. I mean, just look at it. The gameplay is super simple, just run or fly through each regular stage, punching and avoiding everything in sight. There's also some pure flying stages where sometimes you can use your heat vision. The game is a little clunky as the enemies are really hard to hit, so there's actually not a lot for Sunman to do on screen other than just fly away. Also, for some reason, the game will just pause unexpectedly. You can still play Sunman even in its unfinished state, and there's a lot of great graphical effects on display here, but it's probably not one you need to try more than once. Here's a title much maligned by NES enthusiasts, Contra Force. 
Anytime I mention this game, people are quick to point out that it is not a Contra game. Got it. And in fact, this is actually the inverse of the other games on this list. A game that didn't lose a license, but gained it instead. Although developed by Konami, apparently they'd planned for it to be its own game, Arkhound, but then decided to just change the name to Contra Force and hope it'd catch on in America. It didn't. As was the case with most games released after the Super Nintendo was on the scene, Contra Force was largely ignored at the time, especially considering it came out after the 16-bit Contra 3. If you were a big fan of the series who would have grabbed this if you'd known, consider yourselves lucky. Contra Force is a mess, featuring some intense sprite flickering and some of the worst slowdown I've ever seen on the NES. It makes the game borderline unplayable at parts, especially in two-player. The run and gun meets platform formula is still here, but with more complex weapon options seen in later titles, and even different characters in your crew that you can switch to at any time. The game gets a deservedly bad rap, and while I agree that it's pretty rough, I think most of the hate is just that calling it Contra makes everything feel way less impressive. There are still some great graphics, some neat gameplay elements, and that classic Konami soundtrack that makes Contra Force an interesting if intensely flawed experience. Another game I've mentioned a few times on this channel is Power Punch 2, the Man vs. Aliens boxing game that's a sequel to... Well, not Power Punch 1, that doesn't exist, but I'm sure you can guess which game from this intense looking dude on the cover. Yes, this was designed as a sequel to Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, originally titled Mike Tyson's Intergalactic Power Punch. While initially endorsed by Nintendo, at some point they stepped away, which coupled with Tyson's pending incarceration, left Australian company Beam Software with the unenviable task of making and releasing this game however they could. Why they went with the name Power Punch 2 is anyone's guess, but it doesn't matter. There was no salvaging this bad boy, even with the seamless swap of renaming the main character Mark Tyler. It doesn't help that Power Punch is a total chore, taking away the rhythm and timing based puzzle gameplay of Punch Out and replacing it with the much simpler mash and dodge mechanics. That and your ability to compete against your opponent is largely based on how well you perform in these pre fight warm up mini games. If you do not succeed here, it doesn't matter if you hit these alien dudes a thousand times, you will not be moving on to the next level. I'm living proof of this, as after many, many attempts at this game, I still cannot beat the very first opponent. Moving on! Finally, here's a game I can't stop discussing, Cryon Conquest. I talked about Cryon Conquest recently in my Mega Man Clones video, my Female Protagonist video, and in its own specific review, which might make you think that I'm really into this game, but no, Cryon blows the big one. In one of those videos I mentioned that this cover looked a bit like Wizard of Oz meets Star Wars, and yeah, that's half right. Cryon Conquest was originally developed to be a licensed title based on the Japanese cartoon The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. So I'm guessing this would be Dorothy, but with broom-based witch skills? That's a great idea, honestly, and way more exciting than the Super Nintendo version. But of course, the developers at Vic Tokai couldn't use the Oz characters, and so they altered Cryon Conquest to be much more futuristic than fantasy. This means more robots, more 1999s in the storyline, and this intense cyber version of the Wicked Witch. Amazing. The game itself is Mega Man style platforming, but with abilities you can use from the very beginning. Most of these are just variations on the projectile shot, but there's also a screen clearing attack and the old rush jet broom riding. Cryon Conquest is insanely hard, one of the most unrelenting and frustrating experiences out there. Three lives with no continues? Check. Hard to kill enemies that hound you endlessly? Oh yeah. Perilous platforming with zero room for error? You're on the highway to the danger zone, baby. And that's all I know. Many of these are barely rumblings in the internet factosphere, and there's probably way more bizarre details about their origins yet to be found. I should also add that many of these games have hacks available, so you can play the intended versions if you're so inclined. I'm not a master of that stuff myself, but head on over to romhacking.net and you should be able to find everything you're looking for. If y'all can think of any other weirdo titles that fit this mold, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll circle back for a part 2 at some point. Big shout out to the website Hardcore Gaming 101 who provide a ton of insight and deep info on these somewhat obscure titles. I even bought their book which collects their reviews of NES deep cuts, including many I've discussed on this channel, so check that out for sure. I'll link to it in the description. 
Also, huge thanks to my newest Patreon supporter, A-Bomb, who gets a little Guardian Legend treatment for joining the cause. Thanks, bud. If you too want me to scribble out your name for one of my reviews, or you just want to watch the weekly bonus videos I'm making, head over to patreon.com slash words. I'm also streaming a different game every Thursday here on YouTube at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so come and hang out. Until next time, thanks for watching.